What's going on everyone? It's Brody back again with another tennis topic. And today's test topic is going to be all about Wilson tennis rackets. Now, Wilson has a number of rackets. They have essentially four or five main line of rackets out right now. And this guy that I'm going to be sharing with you today is just kind of my way of processing and just helping to explain to people what these rackets actually do. So the first racket I'm gonna explain is going to be the Wilson Ultra. Now, the Wilson Ultra, it's been around for a while. The one thing I'll say about it and that you would wanna know is that the racket is a great all around type racket as well as it has a very big focus on power. So if you're looking for a racket that is going to be very helpful with power, especially if you're beginning or transitioning from a younger player or just coming into the sport to where you haven't played much, but you need a bit more help getting the ball over the net, or you just want a bit more help kind of like all around, the Wilson Ultra does well for that because it allows you to really just kind of fine tune and actually understand how your game is and what you and what your specific play style is without the racket being too overbearing. So the Ultra, it comes typically in the Ultra 100, which is the standard version, the 100L, the 100UL, and typically I've seen the Wilson Ultra 108. Now, the bigger in head size you go with these rackets, that's going to give you a much larger sweet spot, sweet spot on the racket. However, it is also going to give a little bit less control because you have a much bigger head size. As well, with getting a bigger head size, you'll also get even more power coming off the racket. You just have to be able to control it. Now, those are essentially the main key factors about the Wilson Ultra. So the next one that I'm going to go to is probably one of Wilson's more popular rackets that's come out in the recent years, and that's going to be the Clash. Now the Wilson Clash, it there's only the two generations of that out right now, but the Clash is made a, has made a name for itself because it is going to be arguably the most arm-friendly out of any of these other rackets from Wilson. Now, the reason that this is such a big deal is that a lot of people want to make sure that tennis elbow never affects them. They don't want to get tennis elbow. They don't want to have to deal with tennis elbow. I don't want to have to deal with it either. So the Wilson Clash is a great racket to go ahead and get going with because it's very flexible. It's not very stiff. A more flexible racket, just like the Wilson Clash, it's going to be extremely arm friendly and it's just going to allow you to play easy tennis to where you don't have to really worry about tennis elbow unless for some reason something's gone wrong to where the racket's either cracked or you just have a really, really hard string inside of the racket. Or if it's not a racket problem or a string problem, it could just be that you're just swinging a racket that may be a little bit too light for you or too heavy, and that's causing the problem. But with just playing from the racket in itself, the Wilson Clash is arguably gonna be the most arm-friendly version. And now, like the Ultra, the Wilson Clash typically comes in a 100 head size. That's gonna be the standard. And then it, they typically have a 100 light, a 100 ultra light, and then the, they will also have a 108. This one's not as common anymore. It was a really a big one around when the first generation of the class, Clash came out, but the 108's still there. They also have, if I'm correct, a Clash 98, which is a little bit of a smaller head size. So if you're looking for a little more control from the normal Clash line, the 98 would be one to look at. Now, I don't know exactly. They may call it either the Pro or the Tour now, but one of those is gonna be the heavier version of the standard Clash racket. I know that is there, I just don't remember exactly what they call it this time because they keep changing the names with almost every generation of it. That is going to be the clash, however. Now, next up on the list, 
you've probably heard of this one. This one's a tried and true, probably one of, if not the most popular Wilson racket right now. And as you can see from my green marker, you can probably guess what it is. Comment down below if you get it right before I, right before I write it down on here. Let me know if you did. That's going to be the blade. Yes, the tried and true blade, Wilson blade, the brand new one. It's in that dark forest green in my is what I call it. And then you see this racket everywhere from high school to college to the professional tour. Almost every single person has their hands on a Wilson blade. Now, whether that be the now whether that be the regular version of it or some of the other different difference ones, it just depends on your play style. The main reason that you would want to look at a Wilson blade is the blade is going to be a very nice control racket. Now, the control that the Wilson blade offers is pretty good. I won't say it's the best because there is going to be one more racket after the blade that has a little bit more control to it. However, the blade is a nice blend of easy power and easy control even at that regular 98 head size just because of how Wilson constructs it constructs the racket it's not very hard on the arm either and that's what makes the Wilson blade such a kind of like good all-around type racket where a lot of high level players are going to this racket in order to get an easy on the arm control control racket while still maintaining enough power from the 98 head size and the way that the racket's constructed in order to play their best tennis with it. Now for the blade, the standard head size for this racket is going to be the 98, and that's with a 16 by 19 string pattern. Then you have the 98 with the 18 by 20 string pattern. You have the new, which in my opinion is very helpful, the new Wilson Blade 100. For anyone who's wanting to try a blade but wants a little bit more help with power, the Wilson Blade 100 would be a great one to give out in demo. They also have technically the Blade Pro. That one I have not personally hit with. I haven't heard too much about the Blade Pro, so but I do know it's there. Then they also have the 100 Light and the 100 U ultra light i believe so the blade if you're looking for that easy control racket that's going to be a little bit easier on the arm that's where you can look this is probably arguably the most popular wilson racket as of right now and that's why it's on its ninth generation now as i mentioned earlier there is one more racket that's going to be up here that is also for control from wilson but it has a little bit different way of going about it so with this new racket, this is gonna be probably the one that Wilson became known for the most, and it's stayed stayed around the longest because it's on its either, four, I think it's its 14th generation. And that's gonna be the Wilson Pro Staff. Yes, the racket that is actually, it, that actually is and was endorsed by Roger Federer himself, as well as Pete Sampras, when, they, when he played, the Pro Staff is going to be the ultimate control racket for Wilson. Now, you may be wondering, why is that? What, what's different from the blade? The big difference from the blade is that the Pro Staff is going to be a smaller head size. So rather than the 98, the Pro Staff comes in a 97. Now, one score inch may seem like a small and insignificant difference, but with how they construct the racket, it makes a ton of difference. The pro staff tends to be a lot more control oriented. However, it's also a little bit stiffer. And if you remember from the ultra, stiffer rackets do help give you power. So, so that's how Wilson went. Sorry, I ran out of room. That's how Wilson makes the pro staff try and have more power but not a lot of people like that because it can be hard on their arm and sometimes cause tennis elbow. The Wilson Pro Staff 97, it's also pretty heavy. It's usually coming in at about 11.8 ounces strung as a rough guess off the top of my head. So that's a lot of racket. 
Now, granted, they do tend to have the 97L, the 97UL as well, I believe. And then they've started adding different, adding different versions to where there's the Pro Staff. I think it's X to where it's the 100 head size, but with that racket, in order for it to still be a Pro Staff and be more of a control style racket, the Pro Staff X has a 100 head size to it and the beam is extremely thin. So even though you have a 100 head size that's going to help with power and spin, the thinner beam on the racket is just going to kind of nullify that. So you have the control racket that the Pro Staffs are known for. Now, I would say out of all of these four so far, the one that's going to be the best, it just is the one that's going to be the best for the intermediate to beginner player who's looking to actually come up and figure out what's going on and how to actually play the game of tennis, you want to stick with the Ultra or the Clash. Those two will probably help you the best and just it's easy enough to go from there. If you've been playing for a while and you want to try a racket with a lot more control and you know how your game is, you can generate a lot of your own power, you can generate a lot of your own spin, that's when you can start looking at the blade and the pro staff. Now, with that being said, there are two more, technically two more. Yes, there. I know some of you are thinking right now, wait a minute, what's the, what's the second, what's the last one? Because there's one big one that I have not mentioned right now. So with that, I'll just go back to blue and we'll make it easy. So for right now, we'll go ahead and we will get rid of the clash because in my opinion, that clash is pretty simple is pretty similar to this rack next rack and i'm about to i'm about to talk about so we got enough of a move and make sure that doesn't fall so instead of the clash you have the ship Now, the Wilson Shift is a little bit of a weird one. It's the newest racket from Wilson's lineup. And the thing about it is that a lot of the Wilson Shifts, they're all 99 head sizes, which if you don't know, the standard racket head sizes today are 198. So 99 was a bit of an interesting decision, in my opinion, from Wilson to go with because of what, they did, what they're doing with it. So the Wilson Shift, in my understanding of it, is designed to be Wilson's new spin frame. So if they're going for spin, in my mind, I'm, I was just thinking, why would you not just go with the normal 100 head size to help just make it easier? Now, I don't know what was going through the Wilson people's minds. I am not them. But the Wilson Shift is going to be the spin helpful frame even though it has the 99 head size. So we have the regular 99, you have the 99 light, which of course, Wilson likes their light rackets. They also, have, they I think also have the 99 UL, the ultra light. And then the other big thing about the Wilson shift is that it has a 16 by 20 string pattern. Now, a 16 by 20 string pattern is a little bit different from a 16 by 19 because since there's more string inside of the racket for the string for the strings to move and have to go through, it helps to kind of just rein in a bit more of the spin that a regular 16 by 19 would have. So that's why anytime I see the shift, I'm like a little bit confused as to where exactly Wilson was going with it. Now the shift only is in his, I believe it's first iteration. So there are going to be a few, there probably is going to be at least one more line of it. And that would be my guess is just to see that they're going to refine everything from the first initial one and really just dial it in. Here come the second time around the, or the third time around. Because with almost all of these rackets, with the exception of the shift and the clash, all these rackets have been around for years some some of them even decades so wilson is very good at fine tuning and knowing exactly what works for their rackets now it's just a matter of figuring out which ones they really want to hone in on and what they really want those few rackets to accomplish and then with the 
with the shift. Not only does it come in these in these head sizes, it also sometimes come in heavier weights. I can't, I didn't spell heavy right, but there we go. Heavy weight. And also, as you saw, the lighter weights. So those are essentially the main rackets in the Wilson lineup right now. Now, if you remember a little bit earlier, I said that there were two more before I introduced the shift. And there is one final racket. This one from Wilson, it's kind of been, I would say, just forgotten about or Wilson doesn't want it to come around anymore. They don't, they don't really market it. They just have it. And in my opinion, I think it's a great racket that they should have kept going and not tried to replace it with the shift. Now, if you know what this racket is, you've probably either played with it or you've heard about it. And that, and most people who play with it, they actually tend to love it. There's only one real big drawback to it, and I'll get to that here after I say what it is. So, the final racket in the Wilson lineup is going to be the Burn. Now, the Burn racket's been around for a long time. There was, I believe it was Kei Nishikori, he played with it forever before he switched over, and Juan Martin Del Potro, he played, he played with a version of the Burn. The burn has been around for a long time, and the burn has been Wilson's ultimate spin frame. The reason for this is that the burns were typically, hold on, I don't know why I've made an R there, but we go spin, and the burns have typically always had a 100 head size. Now, what this means is that the regular burn is a just regular burn 100 from Wilson. Easy enough, easy power, classic, just kind of standard tennis racket. Nothing too special. The great thing about the burns and the thing that people really did love is that the burns would then sometimes have the 100, but you add the S at the end. Now, what that S signifies is their spin effect string pattern that I believe only Wilson is able to make. So what that string pattern does is that it makes the string bed an 18 by 16. Now, if you know about string patterns, the 18 by 16, 100 S burns, those things are spin monsters. I don't, there's barely any racket that comes close to having as much spin as these rackets. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people loved him because it was just easy power, easy spin, and really easy to play with. The one drawback to the 100S though, is that if you used a lot of spin and you didn't have a string that was built to last, so you essentially, if you didn't have a polyester string inside your racket, you were breaking string constantly because of how much the strings were moving because of the 18 by 16 pattern. So, if you were a younger player who was learning how to do spin, great, this racket will, will, will work wonders for you because not only does it come in the 100 or the 100S with the extra helpful string pattern, it also comes in the 100LS, which is the lighter version. And you can probably guess what's coming next, the 100ULS, which is even lighter. So the burn, in my opinion, is I think that Wilson should have just kept going with the burn and not necessarily made the shift. However, I'm not Wilson. They know more than I do. And if you guys have any ideas on what the actual reason for bringing the shift out and just kind of like phasing out the burn was, please comment that down below. Let me know so that I can actually just know the information too, because I'm very curious. The one other great thing about the burn is that, in my opinion, is that it is probably the most budget-friendly racket. Most of these rackets that I've shown you, whether it be the Ultra, the Blade, the Clash, the Pro Staff, the Shift, all of these are going to be over like $240 brand new. The burns, you're probably looking at max, maybe $179, but I think that's even a reach. You're probably looking more around like $159 or... 149 brand new so 
In my opinion, if you're just starting out and you're able to find you're able to find one, the Wilson Burn or the Wilson Ultra, whichever you prefer. If you want a bit more help with power, go with the Ultra. If you want a bit help more with spin, the Burn will do you just fine. Or if you just want a more budget friendly option, the Burn does great. Stick with those two to start off with for Wilson. After you then have been playing for a while and you understand your play style, that's when you can start demoing and differentiating between the Wilson Blade, the Wilson Pro Staff, the Wilson Shift, sometimes the Clash if you really want something that's going to be easier on your arm, but you can usually stick with the main few ones and then just kind of go from there within all of Wilson. So that's been essentially my guide and my way of understanding Wilson Tennis Rackets. I hope that you found this valuable and that you were able to gain some gain some knowledge from this so that you can go out and just tell other people what you've learned so that they can make a better decision for themselves so that we don't have people getting hurt by their rackets. A lot of people don't know what's going on or don't know how their rackets are designed to play. And my goal here was just to show you how I view these rackets so that if you found something that you didn't know or that you did find very valuable, you can take that with you and, and just help someone else learn about Wilson Tennis Rackets. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it. Comment down below any more questions you may have about Wilson Tennis Rackets or just any other qu questions you may have about rackets in general. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. And as well, if you enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel so that we can grow this message and get the information from the people who have it to the people who need it. There's a lot of tennis misinformation in the tennis community, and I took it upon myself to make this YouTube channel so that I can help get rid of that. And as always, take care.